This video shows the protest against the youth defence billboards that was held at the Dole on the 11th of July 2012. Uh, the protest had been organised, you can almost say, semi-spontaneously via Facebook and was one of a number of events that had happened uh, around people's uh, rejection of the defence campaign that was aimed at shaming women who've had abortions. The audio that accompanies the video is of a pro-choice meeting that was given in Maynooth in 2009 and is a history of the pro-choice movement in Ireland from around the late 1980s, uh, the Students Against Book case, to uh, the early 2000s. You'll find more audio and video like this on the WSM website at www.wsm. .ie. For background articles on pro-choice struggles, go to http colon www.wsm.ie slash pro-choice. Thanks for listening. We were putting that out in a very public way. And part of what we were 
tried to do was actually invite prosecution because we kind of looked at what had happened around the student union cases where Spock had gone after the student unions and we said, well, that didn't really work out for them because it actually started to generate public anger around us. So the basic strategy we were following was to give out the number, mostly down to the GPO, we used to give it out the leaflets, do events like this, invite prosecution. We kind of hoped if they prosecuted us, that would be something you'd then build a campaign around. Uh, Spock had also learned, learned the lessons from the kind of period victory they had during the student cases. They won it, but it wasn't that useful to them, and very wisely didn't actually go after us. But what it did mean was that most Saturdays, over a period of two or three years, there was a few who were stabbed the GPO leafleted. And that turned out to be valuable uh, when on February 6, 1992, uh, the news about the X case broke. Um, now, the specifics of the X case are probably generally known, I don't need to explain this, but basically a 14 year old girl became pregnant as a result of rape, um, and uh, she was called X for protection of the court, so hence the X case. Her parents brought her to England for an abortion, and while they were there, they phoned the guards back here and asked what DNA evidence the clinic should retain for a possible prosecution of the rape case, and instead they were t- told to return home immediately. Uh, the Anthony General at the time had obtained uh, an injunction on the basis of the Eighth Amendment of the passed in 1983, um, and the High Court then ruled that the girl was prohibited from leaving Ireland, uh, quote, for a period of nine months from the date thereof. So essentially she was interned. Um, we were leafleting at the GPO that Saturday, uh, and as I said, we'd been doing that for a while. But what was different about it this time was that literally every second or third person uh, stopped and you know, started talking to us about how angry they were. Now, if you've ever done any street leafleting, that's a pretty unusual situation. Normally, people are quite disinterested. So, in the pub afterwards, we decided something was happening uh, and we should try and do something around it. So, we called um, a picket of the doll for a Monday that was intended just to be a press dance, and we called a rally at the GPO for the following Saturday. And we called it as a rally because we reckoned if less than 100 people turned up, you know, we could just have a meeting and that, that would be fine. Uh, as it happens, the Irish Times advertised the Monday lunchtime demonstration and hundreds of people turned up, maybe as many as a thousand. Like it was, you know, considering we were probably expecting 10 or 15, it was kind of a mind-blowing crowd. Also considering that, I mean, all of us were very young with no real experience of organising stuff at any size whatsoever. We were quite freaked out because we were oh my God, this is much bigger than we thought it was going to be. Uh, it became quite clear Saturday would be really big and probably somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people turned out for we like the argument about the numbers. Um, the other, other thing that was happening was not only were the numbers quite big, but in terms of the slogans people were chanting and stuff, it was much more militant than it had been in the 1980s, uh, with placards, leaflets, and chants insisting on a right to choose, and, and you know, not just on a more limited basis. Um, faced with growing anger, the government took the unprecedented step of offering to pay the course, course, uh, sorry, costs of an appeal to the Supreme Court, uh, which enabled Miss Ex to travel to England. Um, and in doing so, the Supreme Court interpreted the Constitution in a new, in a new way and changed Irish law. Um, it decreed that abortion was lawful in Ireland in the event of there being, quote, a real and substantial risk to the life, as distinct from the health of the mother, um, as in the case, which included uh, the case of threatened suicide. Now that's significant because that, that's remained the actual legal situation despite repeated uh, attempts by the anti-choice people to overturn it. Um, in the aftermath of that, the repeal of the Eighth Amendment campaign was formed. It collapsed ahead of the November 1992 referendum on the tactical differences. The other thing that happened was, in terms of, uh, I think that's another picture from the X case period, in terms of the uh, anti choice movement, was now they were quite uh, demoralised. Um, they mobilised, uh, but it was obvious they lost, in particular, the kind of urban young crowd that they might have previously had support of. And over time, they could tell they were going to lose it. Uh, so one of the things that happened was uh, an organisation called Youth Defence, where it was set up on Father Michael Cleary's 98 FM uh, radio show. And they were interested in another aspect as well, because previously the, the kind of um, anti-choice uh, movements had been quite respectable. Like, you know, they tended to be people that were quite well plugged into society, were well behaved, were very successful at lobbying. I mean, nasty stuff had happened during the uh, 83 campaign, but in the mainstream, you know, they had access to, to power they used it that way. Uh, the approach of youth defence was rather di- different, particularly in the initial periods. Uh, for instance, um, uh, 
death threats were phoned into Radio Dublin when they wouldn't carry interviews with youth defence members. There was an incident on Thomas Street when pro-choice campaigners were attacked with pickaxe hands and snow snooker cues, uh, resulting in some people getting broken bones, including a friend of mine. Uh, youth defence marches were stewarded by large numbers of pipe goons, uh, the knuckles wrapped. There was a famous Irish Times picture from uh, that period, one of the first ones, where they've literally got about 40 guys at the front of the march with you know, the knuckles done up. Uh, when hard press ran and exposed their new defence, the editor, Nile Stokes, had concrete block thrown through the back window of his car. Um, part, of that, part of that story uh, was repeated physical confrontations with pro choice campaigners on the streets in this period, including an attack with hurley sticks on a private pro choice meeting in uh, Buzzworth Hotel just across the road from Dole Aaron. Um, our main response to this was whenever you defence marched or counter demonstrations held, um, and when they attacked us, we held larger demonstrations the following week, but this time we uh, organised larger numbers of stewards to help protect those. Uh, over time, the defence gave up the physical attacks and essentially left us to continue leafleting at the GPO. Um, in late 1992, uh, November, uh, a referendum was held in the aftermath of the X case, and essentially this was the, well, it did two things. One is it was going to clear up the issue of the right to travel and information. Uh, but the third thing it tried to do was it tried to overturn uh, this idea of abortion being legal in Ireland if, on the grounds of a threat of suicide. Um, and that was the 12th Amendment. The, 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 there were three separate amendments. That was the 12th one, which was at the time referred to as the substantive issue. Um, and this uh, proposed that prohibitions on abortion would apply even in cases where the mother was suicidal. Now, one of the significant things about the 92 campaign, and it was a measure of the actual change that was happening, uh, was that two of the unions, the ATGWU and SIP2, ran a joint campaign uh, calling for a yes, yes, no vote. That basically was the kind of pro choice position was yes to travel, yes to information, but no to this attempt to introduce the added restriction. Um, the Irish Congress of Trade Unions released press statements opposing government wording on abortion and produced over 150,000 leaflets arguing their case. So, you know, for the first time, you actually began to get quite large movements being willing to come out and publicly start taking a position that would be identified with the pro choice side. The pro life groups, so anti choice groups at the time, were calling uh, for a, a, a no no yes vote across it. Uh, basically, they didn't want the information, they didn't want the travel, but they, they did want this. Um, closing of the possibility of suicide being a reason, uh, but in fact the way the electorate voted was that yes, yes, no, that the pro-choice organisations were advocating. Um, and in fact, a follow-up poll on the Sunday Independent in February 2003 showed that something like 74% of those who were aged between 18 and 34 put the Eighth Amendment, so that's one passed in 1983, should be scrapped. So part of the big story that's happening in these years is a huge change in public attitudes from 1983 to 1992 and also towards today. Uh, the change that meant that in 1995 uh, a very restricted divorce referendum was actually won just by a few thousand votes but in comparison with the 1986 uh, votes that was quite a significant move forward. So the next significant thing we're going to talk about happened in, in 2001 and that was uh, Women on Waves. Uh, this was a Dutch-based group of doctors, nurses, and women's rights activists who hired a ship, a ship and installed a medical facility, and came to Dublin. Uh, the Dublin Abortion Rights Group, which was we previously been the Dublin Abortion Information Campaign, but we changed the name after the, the, the kind of victory in the 1992 referendum, um, and the Court Women's Rights Choose Group invited the uh, abortion ship, in quotes, uh, to visit Ireland. And the idea was that they ignore outside the three-mile limit and provide abortion to Irish women. Now, we have essentially seen this as a press stunt, you know, something that would generate publicity. We didn't really think any women would come forward to avail of this. Uh, but in fact, in the couple of weeks before that, the uh, ship arrived, over 300 women contacted us. Um, and this astonishing number graphically illustrates how many women in crisis pregnancies had huge difficulties raising money to travel abroad. Um, however, due to lack of preparation on the Dutch end, uh, no abortions were actually carried out. But the other significant thing was that the mobilisation by the anti-choice people was actually really, really minor. You know, we expected all sorts of chaos. Like, we basically expected there were going to be riots on the keys or we planned for that eventuality, but it never, it never came out. 
for the pro-choice side, on the other, on the other hand, it meant uh, putting the abortion rights discussion back on the agenda. Uh, there were 10 days of you know, pro-choice articles in the media. Um, there were demonstrations that was in Temple Bar. Uh, there was also the, 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 the very visible uh, way that was demonstrated that the, the ban was affecting uh, working class women in particular. And, uh, the, the, the anti-choice crowd had been treated. Um, 2002 saw so yet another referendum, yet another attempt to you know, roll back that, that uh, suicide uh, question. Um, and uh, one of the interesting aspects of that referendum is that the um, anti-choice side actually split during it. Right, so here we go. Um, so between the more kind of hardline elements and the softer crowd of going, try and get a bit more of a ban than we have so we're willing to compromise on this and I think it was probably mostly the youth defence who argued the other way. So if you're wandering around Dublin in this period you saw this kind of confusing mixture of posters, you know, <clears throat> what way we meant to go on that. Again though they kind of the more hardline anti-choice side was defeated on it. The main organisation on the no side is the Alliance for No Vote, uh, which actually ran on a very limited budget, about 15,000 uh, euros or so. Uh, the actual vote was very close, about 10,500 votes in the difference, uh, and just, uh, uh, so that's about 50.4% against 49.5. And one of the things that came out of this referendum, and it's become very visible, uh, was that there was a very strong urban rural divide, and also a very strong divide in terms of age groups. Uh, I mean, it was a Fianna Fáil proposal, and it was significant that the areas that this thing that was rejected by included those of Bertie Hearn and Health Minister Michael Martin. Um, so that brings us on to kind of modern era. The video you've been watching was shot at the July 11th, 2012 protest against the youth defence uh, billboards that were seeking to shame women who'd had abortions um, in Dublin. Um, the audio was from a meeting in Maynooth in 2009. It was one of three talks that were actually given at that meeting. Uh, the other two were one on the Women's Information Network, which was the clandestine organization in the 1980s that provided abortion information to women to enable them to travel to England. The other one was uh, giving an account of Choice Ireland, which is a campaign that, that currently uh, uh, campaigns for abortion rights in Ireland. If you want to listen to those two other talks, they're on the WSM uh, Mixcloud account, or the other way of finding them is to go to www.wsm.ie slash pro dash choice, and you'll find that audio recording. It's about the fourth or fifth ones down. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.